Ah, jungle adventure. Trees, trees, vines, temple, it has it all. And if you're wanting that little bit of an extra insight to help you pillage your temple until your heart's content, then you've come to the right place. Note that I've also got a guide on the basics to adventuring in the jungle in the description. We're gonna go through 11 tips to make grabbing the gold that little bit easier. Alas, please drop a like and maybe a subscribe if you're feeling kind and let's get into it. The first tip is knowing the direct path to the temple. Yes, it never changes. You'll enter the jungle at the Bellamisa Trailhead, cut your way through the entrance, and you'll enter into a long stretch that leads to a single gate. Run across that bridge and reach that gate where you'll cut your way through again. Now you're at a section of the jungle that has four gates, and you'll want to go through the North East Gate which could also be referred to as the third gate from the left or the most central gate in the area. This will lead you straight to the temple. Next up is stocking up on supplies. Now, while you adventure, you will need some items. The most important is a machete, which you use to cut through vines and which often just breaks and get lost out of nowhere. Very annoying. By heading over to Cantina El Arbol del Jaguar, there's a good chance there'll be one for sale on a table that you can buy. I suggest buying everything you can afford as random items like plasma bat bait or Drake's fire quencher or a waterfall in a bottle can come in handy when disaster strikes. There's also items that can help you if your needs are taking a hit, whether it be general decay or jungle influences. While you should load up here, in the case of food, it's worth growing a few plants at home, picking them and then taking them with you for the road. Now number three is slightly tied to two, and it's to spend some time to reach level five of the Salvadoradian culture skill. At level five, you can access the secret market, meaning you can purchase unlimited machetes and a whole range of items to make adventuring much easier without having to rely on what's on the table. It's massively helpful. Level five will also mean you learn some tricks and have the knowledge to repel fireflies and lightning bugs naturally, which means less to worry about on foot in the jungle. You can level this by chatting about several Dorada with locals or eating local cuisine, but I find the easiest way is to continually view the statue of Madre Cosecha in the marketplace. This will go towards leveling up the skill, and yes, you can apparently learn everything there is to know about Salvadoradian culture from viewing this one statue 3,000 times. Madre Cosecha. She knows everything. Next up is always going for the prize in text journeys. When you go through a vine-locked area or gate for the first time on a holiday, you will get a text journey. The first option ignores it, the second has a chance to succeed or fail, and the third consumes an item for an almost guaranteed success. In my opinion, never ignore, always have a go, use the item if you have it, because they can give some rare treasures worth upwards of 8,000 simoleons. Tip five is a quick one. While adventuring, you'll come across emotion trees. Always pick them, as the trees have vegetables, being emotion berries, can trigger emotional moodlets, and you might find yourself needing that for the pressure pad trap later or just for personal use. Just to FYI, the tree of emotions in Selvadorada produces a variety of emotion berries for different moods, but growing these on your home lot will see them only produce the type of emotion berry that you planted. Number six is to train skills to deal with traps. When you examine a trap, you have a chance to find out the wrong or correct options to proceed, but the success of examining different traps is dependent on a related skill. For the tall pillars with four sides, a higher fitness skill will increase your examine success. For the three block pillars that spin, a higher logic skill will assist. For the bowl offerings, a higher archaeology skill will help. For the cute face totems, a high charisma skill will help. For the skeletons, it's handiness. And finally, for the pressure plates, it's Salvadoradian culture. Note that these plates are where the emotion berries will come in handy too. Next up is to look out for grouped historical artworks when venturing through temples. Studying these for historical insights will raise your archaeology skill, but when they're all together, you can study multiple of them at the same time, which makes them a rather efficient way to get a little bit of a skill boost. When they're standalone, I suggest ignoring them. Next up, if you're looking for more treasure, at level 4 of the archaeology skill, you can survey for dig piles for a chance to make one appear. And at level 6, you can establish an excavation site on a dig pile, including random ones you find in the jungle. This will vastly increase the amount of treasure you can find at a site, so it's worth doing if you want more treasure. Next up is being aware of aspirations. There are two which link to the jungle adventure game pack, being archaeology scholar and jungle explorer. The trait from completing archaeology scholar mainly helps with your visit to museums, but more importantly the reward trait from the jungle explorer aspiration is called treasure hunter and it's very useful. This will increase the value and the amount of treasure from all chests if your sim opens them. Meaning if you have a group of adventuring sims, make sure your sim with this trait is the one who opens the chests. Tip 10 is to try and get your hands on a rare Belampsaloth Death Relic, which has the power to turn your sim into a skeleton for a couple of days. Note that this will break after three uses. 
Why is being a skeleton so helpful? Well, as a skeleton, your bladder, hunger, energy, and hygiene needs will never decay, meaning you only need to focus on social and fun. This means a lot of accidental trap activations will have no effect on your sim, and in general makes adventuring the jungle so much easier for your sim, because they don't have to worry about their needs, and they'll be nice and high all the time unless they're lonely. This can be made by combining a death base with a Balampsaloth top and adding a refined rare crystal to it, meaning it will require a bit of trekking and level seven archeology span and some time in an archeology span table. Yes, it's not the easiest thing to come by, but I do think it's worth it. Just generally being a skeleton is so much fun. Finally, number 11, which is how to get an antidote if your sim unfortunately has become poisoned. When your sim becomes poisoned, whether it be from activating a trap or potentially the creepy crawlies in the jungle, your sim will become visibly covered in circular green splotches and they'll receive a 12 hour moodlet where they're feeling icky from the poison dart. Now there's a chance the poison will cure itself at the end of the eight hour moodlet, meaning hooray, you're done. But if it starts getting worse, you'll have to find a cure, else you'll be marked for death by poison and eventually die. Now, you might have come across bone dust in your exploration. You can sometimes find it when excavating or even occasionally when failing a trap. If you have some in your inventory, then you can chat to a local and ask about an antidote, after which you'll be able to trade them the bone dust for one. If you have level five of the Selva Doradian culture skill, you can even buy bone dust from the secret store on the market. No bone dust, no worries. Head over to the museum in Selva Dorada and jump on a computer. You'll be able to purchase an antidote for a thousand simoleons. If that's too pricey, you can alternatively donate 250 simoleons to Madre Cosecha, who will rid you of the curse. Note that you can't just be feeling icky. You have to have the full blown curse before this option becomes available. Her statue is located in the marketplace. Alas, that's 11 quick tips to make adventuring in the jungle that little bit easier. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed or found that helpful, then please subscribe and leave a like. I would really appreciate it and have an amazing day. See you later.